Hey, good morning. This is Pastor Harvey Beck. We're glad you're joining us. I'm the pastor at uh, Lester Memorial United Methodist Church, and we do a Wednesday devotion, and glad you're joining us. Let me share a couple of announcements regarding our church and so forth. We will, we're will. we going to begin tonight, actually on the 12th of January, um, our Wednesday night Bible studies, our small groups. So we're going to have several small groups tonight at 6 o'clock. We're not going to have our dinner because of COVID. We've got a number of people in our church connected to COVID as well as in our daycare uh, so a lot of COVID going around and the, the subject topic that I'm going to be preaching about is anxiety tonight, but I'm going to share a devotion this morning about that as well. Uh, so you may hear this and then be a part of our Wednesday night as well, but I'm going to use a book by Max Lakato. Some of you may be familiar with it. Anxious for nothing. And you're going, yeah, right. Cause the Bible says that be anxious for nothing. Finding calm in a chaotic world. Not that our world is chaotic. But all of us deal with some forms of anxiety and so forth. And COVID has even made it heightened it higher. But there's always been anxiety. This passage I'm about to read to you that was the main topic of this book and the study guide that we're going to use. But I'm just going to share some of our own things. How do we all come over things as far as anxiety is concerned? And so the key scripture is in the book of Philippians. You're familiar with it, but I'm going to read it to you. Anyway, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice, so sometimes we just have to choose to rejoice. God, I rejoice in you. I praise you, God. I don't understand the situation. I don't understand what's going on, God, but I'm going to do what you say. I rejoice in you and rejoice in you always, and again, I say rejoice, so that is a key. The rest of it says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Now, I read that for many years, and I'm going, yeah, right. I mean, but he wouldn't have put this in there if he didn't know that we didn't need to read it and talk about it, to be anxious for nothing, because all of us have anxieties in our lives. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, so here's a pattern by prayer, and supplication, which is deep prayer, getting into that, with thanksgiving. Oh, the power there is in being thankful and just speaking thanksgiving is a powerful thing. The Bible speaks about that. So with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. So talk to God about it. Have a conversation with him about it. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God created us with a heart, the internal soulish part of us, but also a mind and what we think and what comes in our mind. And so he wants this peace to guard both heart and mind. Powerful scripture. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, and he lists them, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, then meditate on these things. Because our problems sometimes and our anxieties because we meditate on the bad, yucky stuff all the time. God's saying, choose what you meditate on and what you put your mind into. And so... God created us with a psychological mind. We have emotions. We have a psyche. He created this way. And so he's given us a format and a pattern here to help us through this, to understand and get through our anxieties. One of the statements that Max Lichetto makes, anxiety is a meteor shower of what ifs. A meteor shower of what ifs. A trepidation, a suspicion. An apprehension. It's living life in a minor key with some major concerns. You've ever been tossed or turned by anxiety? Yeah, we all have. If so, you're, you aren't alone. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, anxiety disorders are reaching epidemic proportions. In a given year, nearly 50 million, this was written a few years ago, it may be in higher now, in a given year, nearly 50 million Americans will feel the effects of a panic attack, phobias, and other anxiety disorders. The Bible is the most highlighted book in Kindle. And Philippians 4 that I just read to you, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, is the most highlighted passage. I just thought that was in the Kindle books. The Bible's highlighted more than any, but this passage, more than any other passage, is highlighted. Why? If you read the verses, which I just read, and the ones on either side, you will probably understand its appeal. So I just read it to us. 
The most highlighted scripture promises something our anxious world craves. Peace. Oh, God, could I just have some peace? Throughout this study that we're going to be doing, we're going to be talking about those things. And, and again, ultimately, it's to give us peace. And there's a lot of things that we can do, so we'll be talking about it. But I hope you'll just read. Again, take time to read Philippians 4. Um, I began reading in verse 4, and I read all the way down through verse 8. So that will be the overall arching scripture that we'll use. But obviously, we're going to use many other. Christmas Day. Just a few weeks ago, December the 25th, I shared this with some of the people at church. My daughter, Audra, and son-in-law, Blake, they have two children. So we got a phone call on the 25th. So little fever, I mean, little little Willow had a bad fever, 102 point something, respiratory breathing. So after talking to the um, pediatrician, you know, they basically said, well, nothing's open. We recommend you go to Children's Hospital and go to the ER. Well, that's not what any young couple wants to feel. And of course, we got the phone call. I went down to the interstate. I met my daughter and son-in-law. I got Favor, which is fixing to be five. Here they are headed to Willow, taking her to emergency room. Because I'm praying all the way down there, and I'm praying for my daughter and my son-in-law, because I know anxiety begins to be there. I felt anxious for her having 102 point something fever, respiratory breathing not good, RSVs going around, my mind thinks about that, COVID, flu, you know, you just, that's what happens. And there's some anxiety that comes. And so I begin to pray that the peace of God that surpasseth all understanding would guard all of our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I begin to do what the Bible said do and begin to thank God for little Willa's life. All those things that we begin to do, which is part of the way we get through it. Uh, so we're going to be talking about those things, but I also wanted to share this with you too. And I'm going to read it this morning. I was in a, I'm in a group of reunion group guys that pray together. And so we prayed this morning early at six 30 and, and we ended with the 23rd Psalm. Oftentimes we'll end with a prayer. And I said, well, let's just, let's just speak the 23rd Psalm. And so oftentimes when I'm anxious about something, sometimes I will just quote the 23rd Psalm, which I have memorized, which I encourage you to do, because if we're not careful, we'll start meditating on things that really don't matter. And God says, meditate on who I am. That's why he says, pray to me, talk to me, bring it to me. So just hear the 23rd Psalm again. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Who else can do that but God? He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they do what? They comfort me. Who you are, your presence comforts me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That word, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. One of the guys this morning, Bible started reminding me one night at our Celebrate Recovery, there was a guy that came up. He's a Christian. He came up. He said, I saw those two guys coming in with you. I didn't know what he was talking about. He said, what, what do you mean? I thought about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit walking with me. He said, no, I saw those two guys come in with you. I said, who are you talking about? He said, goodness and mercy didn't the bible say that surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and i laughed and i never thought about it that way that they are going with me so i hope that goodness and mercy you'll be reminded follow you and they shall be with you all the days of your life god bless you let the holy spirit bring peace to you that surpasses all understanding that will guard your heart and your mind in christ jesus in christ's name Amen. Have a golden day.